Bumming with Bob Let's have a few brews We'll have some fun With the bum wine crew So kick your feet up And grab you a beer Cause damn man I'm glad that you're here All right, all right, all right. This is Bumwine Bob welcoming you to an all new edition of Bumming with Bobcat. And we are getting wild this week. We have some special treats on hand. And joining me on the show to celebrate a wild occasion is our good buddy Roadhouse. Is here, Roadhouse man? How you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm, I'm willing to uh, dive a little deeper in the wild eye. All right. Yes, yes. We've kind of been teasing this one for a few weeks now. Actually, more like a like a month or so. Yeah. Ever since the the original care package Roadhouse sent me, which had one variety of wild Irish rose, and then I reciprocated and sent him another flavor of wild Irish rose. So we're getting a. Uh, well, I I personally Roadhouse couldn't wait for me. For the one, so, so I will be doing a double feature on my side here today. But this is one that has been kind of piquing the interest of some people. I had a few people reach out to me. I don't know if this is hitting the shelves more, or if people are searching more. Maybe they're taking our advice and reaching out to the bottom shelf of right. the world. And what we have here to try out first, we're not wasting any time this week. This is the Wild Irish Rose, the Wild Grape, grape wine with artificial flavor and certified colors added, a 13.9% alcohol by volume. So this is a, a new one. I came across this about a month or so ago in my travels, and I was like searching. I saw it down there. It had some dust on it, not not totally covered, but it was a... It's been sitting there for a little while. Yes. And I like how you didn't even, bother, you didn't clean the bottle, you just shipped it. And I got yeah. it just the way you found it. I know, I know. It wasn't, it wasn't like I said, it wasn't like the one you sent me that yeah. had a nice coating of dust on it. Yes. This one had just a little, a little film on it, which I could, I could tell that it had been sitting there for some time, not as many years as yours, because I'll, I'll be posting the pictures up on the website uh, comparing these two bottles that we have here. And you can tell just by looking at them that one is on the newer side and one has been sitting there for God knows how long. But uh, I, I'm, I'm feeling a little uh, parched here and a little thirsty. So you're ready to crack open this, uh, this, this, this wild grape? Yes, sir. All right. Gonna here we crack go. open. The vintage twist top here. Top is Ooh. off. Oh, wow. Got a very strong... You can smell that grape. Yes, you can. Uh, you can almost feel the buzz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what you're getting with this. I mean, it's... It, it does have a... I'm trying to pinpoint the smell of it. It definitely has that nostalgic cheap wine smell. Yeah, yeah. So that gonna... grape is very, very potent. All right, I'm pouring it in the glass. Yeah, I got a fancy plastic cup here, too. I dug out in the cabinet and I found the fanciest glass I could find. And I took a picture of it and I just posted it on Instagram. So it's nothing more deserving than this glass for this choice of Wild Irish Rose. <laughs> wild oh, there we go. I'm, I'm, I'm looking glass. I'm looking now. Oh yeah, that oh yes, that that is fancy right there. If you if you're not following Roadhouse yet, give them a follow at Roadhouse71 on Instagram and you can see the glass in question. And a plastic cup 
is definitely deserving of Wild Irish Rose. Wild oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. You ready to give it a shot? I am, sir. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Ooh. What? Hold on. That is not what I expected. No, me neither. That. Wow. That's uh that is really smooth. Oh my goodness. I know I'm on a mission, a new mission. Ooh. That is trouble. Yeah. I almost took the whole glass down. I'm gonna fill it back up. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna let me yeah, let me pour a little bit more in here. Just uh, give it a shot. But wow, I was not expecting. You know, back when we used to get this when we were younger, and we had four or five of our friends, and we passed the bottle around. It lasted a good 20, 30 minutes. This one gets passed around. It's gone fast, and I know it. It's got a really sweet. It's really sweet. I'll give it that. It, it has a really, it's a strong grape flavor, but it's not a, it's not a bad, it's not a bad grape flavor. I'm still trying to, I don't want to say, I mean, it, it does kind of taste just like grape juice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like you're, you're drinking the, the, the good old like Welch's grape juice out of the big jug. Uh, it sure does. It has it has a little bit of a not not too much of a burn to it. I mean, it, very very slight going down, and when it kind of sits in your throat, you feel it a little bit. But yeah. it, it's not it's not strong. It's not a burn all the way down. It's not a. Uh, it's got a lingering flavor that just stays right there, and uh, the more you try to cleanse your palate with your tongue. It just intensifies it. Yeah, I think it's, I, I can assure you there's probably, I feel like there's a lot of sugar in this one. Mm. I don't know about you. I kind of feel like my, my, my teeth are kind of feeling the, uh, <laughs> the sugar working its way through it right now. Well, my bottle's so old, the back label's gone, and I don't think they put anything on it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if um, if these ones had any back labels or, or not i was trying to trying to find out i couldn't tell because i was comparing this to a bottle of the red wild irish rose that i had and that one didn't have a back label and i think i'm trying to look now i think i have a bottle down here of yes of the yeah, I don't think they put. I have a bottle down here of the the wild Irish rose, the the wild fruit with ginseng that doesn't have a back label. So I don't think they've been putting back labels on these anymore. Okay. So the the little hidden treasure that I found, um, I got two bottles of it. I sent you one with the front label on it. I kept the one that only had the back label on it. It was missing the front. So that one did have a front and a back. Yeah, like I think, I think they switched it up because, uh, like I said, I'm going to, you'll see the pictures out there comparing the two bottles of the wild grape and the wild green apple. And the labels on the front are totally different. So you can tell that they did a, a redesign of it because this the new one here of the wild grape has the has the website you know the cwine.com uh on this this green apple one there, there's no website on here so so i don't know if this was from before the internet <laughs> i mean who knows how long it's been sitting out there right you're on this up there <laughs> i never thought of that <laughs> Unless they had it on the back, since it had a, a back label at the time, but, but still, uh, it's, uh, it's it's definitely two different types of labels. So you can tell that they they rebranded it um, over time. But this, I'm I'm surprised. This wild grape is really good. It's one of them. I've had it in the fridge for what about a couple of weeks now, 
or just a week and a half or so. And I practiced great willpower for this to save it for tonight. <laughs> I mean, um, I commended you before on how well you can just sit on something for so long. And I don't have that in me. Yeah, it's a, uh, I guess it's a gift. Um, I don't know, because I, I had some, I had some, other, I was reaching out to a, uh, well, depending on when this, uh, when, when this releases and when people hear it, uh, I was having a chat with a, with another brand, we'll say, uh, okay. over some, uh, some things. And I showed them a picture of some drinks that I had on hand that I said I was waiting to crack open. And they said the same thing to me. They're like, like, oh man, that's a lot of willpower you have to, to sit there and wait. And, and, sure. I, and, and as much as I want to try them out right away, I, I try to plan it out when, when the time is right for it. And if we can do a, a podcast related to it or somehow right. involve something special, that's what I try to do. And when you were telling me the other day, you're like, hey, I'm, I'm staring at this bottle. <laughs> we got to do it. I'm yes. like, all right, you know, screw it. We're doing it. We're cracking it open. Uh, then, like I said, literally last night, I had somebody send me a message on Instagram with a picture of this and said, hey, have you seen these? And I'm like, I sent the picture back and I said, I got it right here. I'm going to be cracking it open. He's like, okay, let me know how it is because I've had some, uh, some uh, interesting experiences with Wild Irish Rose before. And I, <laughs> I, I want to know if I got to stay away from this one. Well, I knew we were getting ready to do this tonight. And I got off work early. And I didn't know what to do with myself. I was like, well, I don't want to start drinking like I normally do when I come home. So I cleaned the pool. And I came back in, got an MGD. Came back in, got another one, another one, another one. Anyways, I got the pool cleaned. <laughs> and then I got in it, and then I was like, well, I need another beer. And now it's like, hey, what time are we going to do this? I need to calm down. <laughs> yeah, how are we going to? We don't want to have another incident like the, the, uh, the, the lockdown, archive. the archive podcast that hasn't seen the light of day after a, <laughs> a fun night you had. Yes. <laughs> So, yeah, I had to uh, uh, pull back a little bit on the reins and uh, compose myself, be more mature about this uh, podcast tonight. Yeah, we don't want a repeat of the archive. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one day that podcast might see the light of day. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. If, if the demand's out there, maybe if some people get out there, as we've laid down the challenge, to get out there and get searching – Go to your liquor stores, go to the, the corner bodegas, go wherever you get your alcohol, get out there, get searching. If you got to go to some shady parts of town, some, some bad neighborhoods to do it, get out there, get searching. So if you find some of these classics, some some rare wild Irish rose, night train, Thunderbird, Cisco, uh, you know, post a picture, tag, tag me, tag Roadhouse in it. Uh, Get out there, get searching, because there is a, uh, a handsome reward out there for anybody who finds some of this stuff. And you tag us in it. We'll see it. We'll see it real quick. And, uh, well, just today, I found a new store today, and I, I, I sent you a picture, and I'm like, cross your fingers, <laughs> going in. And uh, there was no luck, but, you know, I can cross that spot off my list and uh, look for the next place. You don't know unless you try. That's it. Anytime I'm driving down the road, I'm in a, in a different town, a different neighborhood. I see a store, just pull off in there quick, walk in, and I just walk right down the aisles, look back and forth. Most of the time, I, I'll ask him, oh, do you have anything? See, they always ask you, you walk in, they say, hey, what are you looking for? And I don't really have an answer. I'm just I'm just looking for anything I haven't seen before. That's really right. it because I was out last week. I'm going in and the guy's like, "Hey, can I help you?" I'm like, "I'm just, I'm just browsing." So I'm going around right. and I do feel bad walking out 
empty handed in places because it's like, hey, can I help you with something? I'm like, well, you, you can, but you can't because you don't have anything. Um, because I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for anything I haven't seen. And if I can walk in, see a bottle of wild wild grape on the shelf, well, hell yeah, I'm gonna I'm picking that up. I'll spend the the four ninety nine. You, you got it. I'm I'm buying the bottle. Uh, but when you go into all these places, nine times out of ten, it's all the the uh, it's all the hits. It's all the same stuff over and over again. Yep, yep. It's very rare you see anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, most stores are all laid out exactly the same. Uh, the same categories, the same profile, everything. And it's funny that you say that. And when they ask if they can help you, <clears throat> and you know, it's like, well, I'm just going to check some stuff out real quick. And then, you know, you go up there and you're empty handed and you feel kind of bad that you just spent 15, 20 minutes in their store <laughs> and you're about to walk out empty handed. And I at least say, all right, so I'm looking for some stuff you probably don't have, but if you ever heard of Night Train or Thunderbird or Cisco, and then all of a sudden they get the deer in the headlight look. <laughs> and they just, they're not looking at you. They're kind of looking through you. Like nobody, nobody asks for this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's where we're at, you know, and it's just like, one guy, the guy today at the store I stopped at, he said, oh, I haven't seen that in a long time. And I'm like, you're right, buddy. I said, uh, I felt kind of bad. So I went ahead and bought that banana red. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times I'll end up just picking up a, a tall boy of of something. Uh, it's like, I'll now uh, a lot of times I'll go in. I'll say, I'll see what change do I have in, in my in the console in the car okay go look around look on the show okay what's in the cooler okay what's the cheapest tall boy you have do you have anything that's like 99 cents you go to some place where they have this (laughs) five dollar bill in my pocket is all i had and then i had my debit card i'm like well i'm gonna buy something so i grabbed the banana red and i was praying it was under five bucks right 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 because a lot of these places okay it's like the ten dollar minimum for like the card purchase or they're going to charge you the the three extra bucks or something for it. <laughs> it's yeah. like it's like in that case all right if you're charging me that i'm just going to load up on, on more stuff yeah and you know captain crude already commented on my post and, uh, he, <laughs> and him being a veteran drinker he could tell this bottle is well chilled because he made a comment <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah selection Sure oh yes, too. yes, yes. Crew knows that he's the one who gave me this this bottle of the the wild Irish rose, the wild fruit with with ginseng. Yes, he's the one that that gave me that. And you can check out. There's the video in the archives on my YouTube of, of him yes. and myself when we got to crack open that wild Irish rose, the wild fruit with ginseng, the original bottle, out in a in a restaurant. <laughs> that is a class classy move right there yeah that was we we went out we went out the one time and and he brought the bottle we we sat down and we we asked the waitress and we're like oh can we get two glasses to open it she's like oh well there's a a ten dollar uncorking fee (laughs) if you you bring your own uh, bottle and we're like well (laughs) well this is the twist cap (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and and so she's like, all right, she brings us two glasses. We open it up. We try it out. The, the video is out there. You can see it. Uh, we tried to persuade her to to join us in it, uh, but she would not partake in the, the wild Irish rose. But she did waive the ten dollar uncorking fee for us. So so that was that was very nice of her. If, if um, I don't remember her name, but if she happens to be out there listening to the podcast. Uh, hit me up and uh, I still have that bottle. We can, we can try it out again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You can tell us your thoughts on it. Cause I'm sure Every she saw it and, hear- and she saw us sitting there and we're recording, you know, you got our, our phones out. We're recording everything, taking pictures of the bottle on the table. And this is on like a Friday night in this busy restaurant. And we're doing all this stuff. She's probably gonna be like, what the hell were you guys doing? <laughs> I was, Every time I hear this story, I've watched the video a couple of times, 
but every time I hear the story, I think about all right, the tables next to you, the people sitting next to you having dinner. Did any of them like um, check you guys out or or make any mention like, hey, no, no, nobody said anything. No, I mean, we were out there. Nobody, nobody said anything. No comments. Nothing. It was. Uh, uh, you thought maybe somebody would see it and then say, "Hey, you know, let me have some of that." You know, <laughs> next thing you know, we're passing the bottle around the restaurant. Yeah, that, I mean, normally when uh, I'm in a restaurant and somebody next to me has ordered a plate of food that looks just totally amazing, and. You know, I'm looking at the menu and I'll, I'll look over and say, hey, if you guys don't mind, what did you order? And they'll tell me and I'm and I'll I'll just get the same thing because it just looks great. Um, not everybody reaches out like that in public anymore. But uh, if somebody was sitting next to me and they had something like that sitting on their table, I would have to ask. Oh, yeah. That? And. You know, if I was doing what you did and somebody asked that, like, here, have a try. Yeah, exactly. Here, you got a glass? Yeah, pour it out. Yeah. Here, take, yeah. take a sip. Pour that water out on the ground. Here, I'll pour it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using my, uh, I'm drinking my, my boxer light here. That's my, my palate cleanser. Yes, yes. Before I, before I go through. Never in my life have I seen that or heard of it, and, uh, and it's definitely not around me. So, yeah, I I did reach out to them. I have not heard back yet. I don't know <laughs> if you listen to the last podcast that I did with with Pete from the Grocery Gamblers. We went into the whole spiel on Boxer Light and their whole line: Boxer Ice, Boxer Bubbly, Boxer Apple, Boxer Watermelon, like this whole line of beverages that they have on their website. Which do they exist anymore? Nobody right. knows. Uh, I did reach out to them through their comment section. I sent them an email. I have not heard back yet, but fingers crossed uh, they will they will get back to us here. But uh, look at it. It's funny. I had the you know I had this wild Irish rose, the wild green apple, nice and and chilled in the yeah. fridge. So I had it out on the on the top on the bar top over here. And it's starting to sweat a little bit. That that front label now is starting yeah. to peel off and it eat a little bit more. So I got I got to crack this one open now. I can't wait for you to try that. I I try this. It. All right, so I'm gonna crack that open. Oh, there you go. Yeah. They got the little twist cap there. It's got its little turn arrow on the cap. To tell, okay, turn it. Turn it to the right as if you've never opened a a bottle before. It's that old. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, this the other one, the grape one, does it have a? No, it does. It does. It does have a turn thing on that one too. I wasn't sure. Oh, okay, it's on the side. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was looking on the top. Beg my pardon. Okay, all right. Let's see. Okay, I smell. Uh, that's that's your usual green apple smell to it. There. Let's let's, yes. let's see. <laughs> see. A little glug glug glug. All right, let's see. All right. Wild Irish Rose, Wild Green Apple. Now, this one here is coming in at 18% alcohol by volume. Grape wine with citrus spirits, natural and artificial flavors, and artificial colors. Uh, that, that's all we have on the front label here. <laughs> There's no other info. So and this is green as the Hulk. Yeah, that, that is a really green color to it. So I... Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that's now it's another one that is pretty smooth. Another one that doesn't have too much of a of a kick to it. Right. And the flavor isn't, I expect it to be a lot more sour, but, but right. it's not. It's not. It's actually. Yeah, because when you think of green apple, you think like a Granny Smith 
Or... Yeah, it's got like a little bit of a tart flavor to it. Yeah. And and I was kind of expecting it to be like, I don't know, did you ever have the the green apple Cisco? I have not. Yes, yeah, I had that one time years ago. Yeah, I heard that story. <clears throat> and that one had a really well now also that was Cisco, but but that's also coming in at the same ABV. I mean, the Cisco is at 18%. Right. This, this Wild Eye is at 18% too. So you can't really go off the ABV saying that's why the Cisco Green Apple is a lot more of a stronger taste to it. Yeah, and the Cisco, is, it just seems thicker. Like sure. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so let me see. I'm gonna take it, take a look, pour a little bit more here. So when I tried the green apple, um, we were having the cookout that day, and and uh, both my sons were over, and uh, you know, one's twenty one, the other one is twenty three, and the twenty three year old does some drinking. He knows, but the twenty one just doesn't do a whole lot. But I gave him a taste of the green apple, and he really liked it. And uh, the oldest boy there, he was like, yeah, it's okay. (laughs) I told him to leave. (laughs) That's a get out. Yeah, get out. out. Go sit in the driveway. No no, no food. No, you're not eating here tonight. Yeah, go go out in the yard and pick up dog poop or something. Uh, (laughs) But we, we sat there and finished that bottle off that day, the three of us. And, now, uh, now, did you have that? Now, did you have that chilled, or are you drinking that just straight up uh, well, room temperature? It, no, we had it chilled. Um, okay, okay. I had it in the fridge, and then um, I put it in the cooler of ice, and it really got chilled down. And uh, we would just pull on it and stick it back in the cooler of ice. Yeah. See, see, now that's the question, kind of, with these ones is that they don't say to chill these like the night train. And the Thunderbird, those bottles say on them, you know, serve very cold or, or serve chilled. Now, the Wild Irish Rose doesn't say that. So you don't know if you're supposed to drink it as a regular table wine, just right. at room temperature, or should it be chilled? Uh, you don't really know because you think maybe with the regular Wild Irish Rose Red, I could see that. That you're supposed to just drink that straight up, you know, room temperature, crack it open and drink it. Yeah. But with with these ones, you don't know because a lot of the flavored ones, like the MDs, you know, you're supposed to have those chilled and cold. So it's, they don't tell you on here specifically, should it be chilled? Should it not be chilled? I mean, my rule is always, you know, get them nice and cold before you drink. Right. After, after I had that, that warm green apple cisco <laughs> that one time <laughs> it was like all right you know if we're drinking any bum wine keep that shit on ice it, it's got to be nice and chilled right now myself i really like wild Irish rose red just room temperature um i've tried it both ways and they're both good but i prefer it just room temperature I gotta try. I'm mean, gonna have some left of a bottle that I think I had it chilled. It was it was chilled. It's been sitting out now. Uh, I think next time I'll try it room temperature and see uh, see how it fares. It's with really that. easy to do. You just set it out. And you come home the tomorrow and you open the cap and pull straight from the bottle and then make your make your uh, judgment right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's easy to do with the red because the red is. Easily available. I still, I can still get the, the, the seven fifty, the big jug of, the, of the red. Uh, it's not that hard to find the the red wild Irish rose these days, or that nasty ass white. I mean, I haven't seen it. I mean, I only knew of one place that had the white. Oh, I see it everywhere. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I've only had it the one time. I had the white, uh, but there's only one store. It's not even, it's uh, maybe like a 45 minutes away 
but I'm usually not in that direction. Uh, but it's, it's been a, it's been a while since I've, <laughs> I've, you know, I've indulged. I, I think I might just buy some up, um, just to power through it because I'm stubborn. Yeah, just to give it another shot. You know, yeah. it, could be, it could be the redemption. Uh, we, we did it with the Four Loco, the Four Loco and USA. Sometimes it takes that next go around to, to give it another shot and see how it is. You know, we get kind of spoiled on the uh, the sugary tasting stuff. And maybe we just didn't give the respect it needed, even though it is on the lines of rubbing alcohol. <laughs> maybe we were just our palates weren't mature enough for it. That's true. It's true. It's just, it's it's very possible. Uh, it could be, but yeah, this, this green apple. I mean, both of these are are pretty good beverages. Now I don't know, depending on how much of it you're drinking in one sitting, uh, how it might turn out. But I guess if you're responsible with it, <laughs> uh, you can definitely get a good buzz. I'm not responsible because I'm below the label on the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to have half a bottle down. It is really good. Yeah. Well, at least that one, at least the grape, that, that's only 13.9%. So you're, okay. you're, you, you can at least think of that and say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not too far over the line on that. Now, if you're drinking the whole bottle of the 18%, wild green apple uh now uh you might be having some problems after that one <laughs> yeah i mean that's a mistake we made when we were doing the when we did the mad mosa podcast and uh what did we rotate over to what was the second thing we was drinking oh that was the uh, the neon burst okay and then i mixed the neon burst with cisco and that's where the line got crossed. Yeah. yeah. And that was the same thing with me when I started mixing the neon burst with the champagne I had left. So that was, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, that was a rough day after the, the, <laughs> Mad, the Mad Mosa itself was What's a great the, idea. Yeah. Uh, it was the aftermath of the mixtures and the concoctions that came with it. That were a, a bad choice. You know, tonight we're make, we're doing uh well, you are, I'm not, um, two different wild Irish roses that night. We should have just stuck with the Mad Mosa and talked about it, but we went on and did a review on the uh, neon burst, the fruit punch. And I mean, I could not get through that can all in one sitting. So I poured the rest out and I topped it off with some Cisco, which, um, was a bad life choice <laughs> you live and you learn that's what yes. we do here that's what we yes. do on the on this podcast that people don't know by now <laughs> we put the work in for you so you don't have to suffer through it we we use our educated uh reasoning behind this to give you guys the the thumbs up or thumbs down with it drink or not to drink exactly that that's what we do that's why you see the features are out there to, to drink or not to drink should you drink this should you not drink it uh we're out here to test it out and see what happens well if you're going to call it on the wild grape i'm going to say to drink oh yeah yeah definitely the the wild grape definitely to drink uh, the green apple wild green apple to drink uh, definitely two great choices, uh, really with the exception of the white wild Irish rose, which it's been at least eight years, I think, since the last time I had it. I think it was in 2014. It was probably, I think it was right after I started the website was when I, when I tried out the, the white. So it's about eight years now, so it might be time for the redemption story. I think so. I think um, our palates have matured, and I think we're ready for another shot at that. Yeah, because every other flavor, now, I've only had 
the the red. I've had the the wild fruit with ginseng. I've had now. Oh, I had the Moscato too, uh, oh. which which was it was decent. Uh, not nothing great, but it wasn't right. anything bad. Well, I mean, I'm, I like Moscato. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't bad. It was just it wasn't anything uh, to write home about. That's what I've always said about the the red of wild iris rose is that there's no true flavor to it. I've always thought of it as a a lower end like night train as just a as a cheap red wine. So there's nothing fancy about the red wild iris for us. I guess that's always been the thing because it's not like a fancy, oh wild green apple, wild grape, you know, wild fruit, uh all the all these wild flavors. It's just red. <laughs> <laughs> it's just- I uh, know it just says red. It's just it's just red. It's red. There's white, Moscato. I mean, yeah, there's, there's no sense of trying to church it up any. No, 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 no. And, and I guess the only other one which I don't know because when when I was really happy that you you found this this wild green apple because I have this sign sitting down here in my basement of the the wild iris rose the the fresh take on tradition whenever they release these which was the wild green apple and then a, a red wine variety of it. Now, what's the difference between a red wine, wild iris rose, and just a red? I, I don't know. Because <laughs> I've not seen that, that red wine ever in person. So yeah. if, if you've seen it or you, you have it, uh, let me know. And well, so it's we can try it out. <laughs> the labeling. Because you look how old the green apple label is versus this, they probably shortened it down from red wine to just red. Right, it's very possible. Yeah, That's you gotta try right. to, you gotta, yeah, gotta try to find these vintage bottles out there. Because That's the other why we so hard for these guys to get out on the streets and do this, you know, do this searching with us. Yeah, and and the other thing that I brought up this past weekend too, when I was showing off. Uh, when I was reorganizing my my uh, my bum wine basement here, was the sign I have of the the Thunderbird TC, which was the the Thunderbird Thunder Cola from I think it was the nineties. I I don't even know when this came out. There's very little information on it out there on the internet. Um. I bought this sign off eBay probably 10 years ago. Okay. And so anybody out there who has any knowledge or if you somehow have a bottle of it, I, I, I highly doubt <laughs> there's any bottles of Thunderbird TC sitting out there because there's only the only place you can see online is the old uh, ghettowine.com website where they have a couple pictures of the bottles and this person has a picture of a bottle of the Thunderbird TC along with a bottle of the old special brew and another malt liquor can that I can't quite make out what it is. So just judging by that, I got to say sometime in like the mid <laughs> mid to late nineties is, is when this was out there. Uh, but it's very sparse and I'm always out there trying to find anything related to it. So anybody out there who knows anything about the old Thunderbird TC, uh, let me know. Yeah, that'd be a good, uh, I've never heard of it. So. Yeah, it's it's not, it's, it's nothing out there. Like you said, there's, there's very little out there about it. Uh, I don't even know. I think it it must've been just from, my old bum wine days of just searching between the original bumwine.com and ghettowine.com where they had a list of, Oh, all this, this cheap shit, you know, cheap wines. <laughs> and it was like, yeah. Oh, I know, I know Thunderbird. And it was like, Oh, Thunderbird TC. It was like, what the hell is this? And then I just kind of searching on eBay one day and I saw somebody selling this, this tin sign. And I don't know, it 
at most it was 20 bucks at most for the sign and i'm like yep sold you got it <laughs> yeah that's fine I'm, I'm buying this shit yeah we talked about that the other day and you know my old colt 45 collection that dated back to the you know uh or late 60s early 70s um when Colt 45 was owned by National. And I lost all that in a divorce. And it's saddening. Now we're looking at 25 years later. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember I used to have this nice sign. And it was styrofoam in a way. And it just the Colt 45, but the horse was in a... Uh, it was actually like tin and it was plated in gold and the horse was bucking and kicking and stuck to the sign. And that was the most amazing piece I've ever owned. Oh, <laughs> you got, you got to find it. You got, <laughs> you got to find one and reclaim it now. I know it. It was just a great piece. And uh, all the ones I find at this point now that are similar on the horse, like the tail is broke off, you know, it's just not complete. No, no, yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough out there to find something that old and in, in such good condition these days. And left, you were just randomly stumbled across somebody at like a garage sale, yeah, or something I, that was selling it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I still have a Colt forty five Zippo lighter. And a, uh, like a brooch, like a pin for your jacket. Like back in those days, everybody wore jean jackets. Right, right, right. It's a Colt 45 can pin that went on your coat. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. But I still have the Zippo lighter. Um, uh, it's put up in well keeping. Uh, yeah, all the, uh, all the good stuff, all the, the, the vintage, uh, drinking memorabilia out there. And like you said, you got to get out there. You got to get searching guys. If it's hitting the stores for searching those bottom shelves or hey, hit up some, uh, some garage sales. Maybe you can find some classic uh, <laughs> goodies out there too. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take it all. <laughs> yeah. The garage sales will be a half, half drunk bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, maybe you can bad. trade. Maybe you can trade them. Yeah. <laughs> you can do some bartering and, you know, get them down to at least under 15 cents. Yeah. <laughs> hey, whatever but, it takes. A garage. Sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but hey, but hey, you know, it's, it's, it's always a good time. We got to crack open. The wild Irish rose, the, the wild grape, which I think unanimously gets a to drink from from both of us here. I think we yeah. both uh, enjoy that. And then the follow up of the wild Irish rose, the wild green apple uh, gets another thumbs up. So we're two for two here right. today on the podcast of trying out the the wild Irish rose. And, and while I don't think you can probably find, I mean, unless you're like roadhouse here, you get out there, you get searching on the bottom shelf. Maybe you can find this wild green apple, but I'm pretty sure I do not think that they actually make this anymore. This is a, <laughs> a vintage I, bottle. I really think I found the last two bottles on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. But I think this, if you're interested in the wild grape, I think that is out there. Cause like I said, I found this myself. I had somebody else reach out to me a couple days ago and said they saw it too. So you might have better luck finding the wild grape in your travels. And you can't go wrong with either one. If you can find the, the green apple, perfect. Pick it up, enjoy it. Uh, if you can find the wild grape, pick that one up too because it's it's got a really smooth flavor uh no real burn to it uh it's a uh 
hey, it's an enjoyable beverage at 13.9% ABV. It'll get you a uh, a nice buzz going, I think. We can agree on that. Yep. It's a good, it's just a good bottle to keep in your core of beer. And when you go back to the cooler to grab another beer, you pull the bottle out and get you a big slug off of it, put it back in the cooler, get your beer, go on. Every time you come back, just do a little pull on it. It'll yeah. keep that buzz just right for the whole and, day. And I was just thinking, I could say so when you were talking about in the cooler with the ice, I was thinking this could be something good for a nice uh, like a grape slushy yeah. with it. I think you could you could mix this up in your blender, throw it in there. Uh, maybe add a little little something more to it, but I think the grape could be a good baseline uh, for it some for some summertime really drinks. Good baseline for the bum wine sangria. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you get that nice grape flavor, and then kind of gets your other flavors around it. So, uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be testing out. We're going to be testing out some new concoctions here over the summer since we are we're in prime time now. I mean, I'm in, I'm in full full experimental mode um i've been talking to you lately about doing the sangria and i'm mowing over different ideas now that i've had this all right it's back to the drawing boards because i thought i had a good recipe put together <laughs> well i think that's but, the whole thing i think you're always going to be trying to perfect it and that was my problem years ago when I had friends and, you know, I, I, I used to just mix up the, the Thunderdew, you know, right. Thunderbird and, and Mountain Dew or, or the Night Mist, the Night Train, Sierra Mist or Sprite. And then people were always asking, okay, what's the next concoction? And it got to the point where you're trying to perfect it too much. And I did do for Halloween one year, I did a, it was like a, big bum wine jambalaya concoction. I mean, it's out there in the archives. The, I think it was the Halloween 2016 concoction where I was just mixing up everything I had. MD, Night Train, Thunderbird, Cisco. I mean, it was all in one jug and it, and it turned out pretty good with like a, a, a Sierra Mist kind of baseline as the, the soft drink with it. Yeah. But you're always trying to find that right mix of everything and, and you'll go right. crazy trying to perfect it but i think there's a lot of different concoctions that you can do and you'll be happy with whatever you make i think that's it you're right you're right and uh the more i want to try it it's just getting the people over to my place to try it because you know uh The bad thing about it is we just got a little older. Not as many people hang out as a group anymore on my end. And uh, we're me and my old drinking buddies, we're kind of spread out now. So it's like if I make a batch of this, I'm almost stuck by myself drinking it. <laughs> and, and as much as it turns out good, and I want to share it with everybody, and I can't, and it's just heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, yeah, you got to try to time it right. Whenever you know that you're going to have people over, you're doing something, that's the time to to mix it up and give it a shot. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're just doing your own. You're just on the uh, the, research, the research and development team over there trying to <laughs> come up with the new concoctions. Well, we're going to have to come up with some kind of uh, plan or date where we can all just meet in a central location and just have a good old get together, good old fashioned get together, plan it a year ahead of time. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, people do it. People have these meetups and yeah. while we, we did try them in years ago, I mean, we had the, the lackluster, uh, the, the bum wine, Bob, the, the WrestleMania bash in Atlantic right. city. Uh, and I wasn't which, involved as much then. Or I yeah, was, I mean, it was. I think it was. It was a great idea. <laughs> and yes, we had a few. Man, okay, it was. It was, it was me, my crude, and then one other person. And I had a bunch of people that said they were coming, but never did. But you're kind of really only situated to that area. That, was that in 
2015 or 16. Uh, yeah, that, that was six, 2016. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're in 2022. You've grown this much since then. Your listener base has grown. So I think it's about time that we put together a, a get together. And I'm, I'm laying this out for you. Um, we need to put some our brains together and get this to happen because uh, the, the people need this. They do. They need a they need a weekend of a bum wine festivities. Correct. So I'm throwing games. it out there. I'm throwing the challenge out there for you. Um, I'm calling out Crude. Uh, crude seems to have all the hookups. Uh, <laughs> we need to get this yeah. together. <laughs> um, whatever it takes from me on my end, I'm down for it. Oh yes, uh, I missed, definitely. I missed out on the early days. But uh, I've been listening for a long time. I know I, I, you, you're I one of you're one of the. Involved. I know you're one of the OGs of the of the 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 Bum with Bobcat days, and and now you've become a a full fledged member of the of the, of, the, of the crew. So yes, right. we, we will definitely get something going, and, and stay tuned because I'm working on some other uh some other ideas, some other. Things related to the to the bumwinebob.com universe that should be hitting the hitting the airwaves in the in the couple weeks from now. So 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 stay tuned for that. But before we wrap things up here this week, Roadhouse, do you have anything else you wanna you wanna say to anybody out there or any other advice to the people? It's always gonna be the same thing. Put in the work, boys and girls. Get out there, spot your liquor stores. Even though they might be in a bad part of town, you'll get respect when you get out and walk inside. Yeah, you walk and you just go to work looking. Once you do it a few, three or four times, you know right where to look. <laughs> I mean, it just becomes repetition. All the liquor stores are laid out the same. Just get in there and give it a look. If you see something, go ahead, pick it up, take pictures post it up, tag us in it, um, and we'll give you the feedback really quick. Um, that's all I got to add to that. <laughs> Remember, if you see something, say something. All right? That's the... That's, that's the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And trust me, I, I've, got, and trust me I've, got into, I've gone into some shady stores, and I've gotten some looks, and I've just kind of hightailed it to the back. <laughs> and it looked... I've got a stature about myself when I walk in a place. I kind of take the place over. I'm just yeah. big roadhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't get a lot of shit from anybody, but when I walk in a place that I don't belong, I can pretty much control the situation because I go in some shitty parts of town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that you just, my guy, I'm an old redneck. I don't belong in the hood. Yeah, <laughs> um, I walk in there in bib overalls and cowboy boots, but I find what I need. I ask the questions I need. I put in the work, and the respect will come just for you showing up. So exactly. Don't, be, don't exactly. be worried about it. Yeah, exactly. You go in there. You you walk in. You give them the old you know head nod. You know how you doing. You, yeah. you go through. You walk back. You go through. You see what you got. You 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 take collection of the inventory. And then either you walk out with some goodies or you walk out empty handed. Uh, you know, you do what you got to do. Yeah, correct. So that's all I got to add, Bob. All right. Well, you know, hey, Roadhouse, it's always great having you on here. You know, you've, you've become a, a staple of the podcast, you know, as we crack open all these, these fine beverages, the best of the worst in cheap booze. Uh, and as we said, we have a couple winners here this week. You win some, you lose some, and we won this week. So we, hey, we won big time. So yeah, we win this week. And you know, stay tuned. I'm not going to spoil anything yet, but uh, the next podcast, you know, knock on wood, barring any unforeseen circumstances, should be a fun one. Uh, something totally different that we've never done here on the show before and if all goes well 
Uh, it could be something that you'll see more of in the future. But, hey, until then, uh, be sure to check out the website at bumwinebob.com. Uh, tell your friends to check out the podcast, Bone with Bobcat, and all your favorite podcast apps. Like, subscribe, review, rate, uh, all that good shit. You know where it is, all the podcast apps. Uh, but, hey, until next time, he's Roadhouse. I am Bum Wine Bob. Cheers. Cheers. I need a beer.